afternoon. Welcome to the Pink Lounge. My name is Amy Amigo and I am the founder of the Sparkle Foundation. The Sparkle Foundation focuses on transforming the world one girl at a time. I'm your host in the Pink Lounge where we focus on powerful, influential women and men who is um, showcasing what God has done for them. They overcame huge challenges in their lives and have been instrumental in changing other people's lives for the better. In the Pink Lounge, we showcase the overcomer. Today we are continuing with the Possessed Men series. Um, if you don't heal from what has hurt you, you will bleed on people who never hurt you. Mark 5 verse 2 and 3 says, As soon as Jesus, Jesus got out of the boat, he was met by a man who came out of the burial caves. This man had an evil spirit in him and lived among the tombs. Nobody could keep him could keep him chained up anymore. We can be sure that the possessed man did not start out this way. At one time, this man lived a normal life such as others, but his own irrational, wild behavior convinced the villagers that that he was demon possessed or at least insane. They bound him with chains to keep him from hurting others, but he broke the chains time and time again. Finally, they drove him out of town and he lived in the cemetery, a mad man amongst the tombs, hurting the only person he could hurt but himself. Today, I'm proud to announce to you that we are speaking to Elder Clarence Olafir. He was born and raised in Nigel, in Alra Park, married to Elder Nicole Olafir, and they have two beautiful handsome sorry, boys. Second year theology student, worked in the, in, in, um, in, in the logistics industry. He's the founder of the Jesus Makna movement and is also the director of the Jesus Makna merchandise. He serves under uh, Bishop Oral and Apostle Crystal Whitaker in the Rivers of Hope Ministries. Yeah, the Clarence Willafir. Today we want to welcome you in the Pink Lounge. So good afternoon, Elder Clarence. Um, welcome to the Pink Lounge. Um, it is indeed an honor for us to have you here. Um, I'm looking forward to today's session. I'm excited. Um, I know and I know and I know that through your testimony, um, you know, we've seen people's lives being changed through your testimony. And this time around, we will have even more testimonies. I just want to thank you for being part of the Pink Lounge. Um, yes, it is your first time here. Yes. And this is, a, this is the month where we're having the men in the Pink Lounge. We are changing the game. Hey. Yes, we are changing the game. <laughs> so right. welcome, welcome, Elder Clarence. Um, greetings, um, Elder Amy. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to be here at the Pink Lounge. Also, greetings to the viewers out there. Yes, yes. Um, you guys are doing a sterling job. Um, amen. It's good to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Elder Clarence. Um, I'm so excited for this month, uh, the series of this month. Elder Clarence, um, the testimonies that's coming out is great. It's great. And the reason why is I've always believed that, you know, a man is very important in one's life. A man is important in today's society. Yeah. A man is important in the, in the church, and that is one of the reasons why I, why in actual fact God gave me this revelation that this is this needs to happen on this platform, right. and I believe that God is going to do tremendous work through this platform in the lives of men. So today, um, Elder Clarence, without any further ado, if you can just introduce, we already introduced you. The Pink Lounge knows who Elder Clarence is, oh. but can you? Tell us, and can you tell the viewers out there, um, who is Clarence? Clarence, Elder Clarence Olafir. So, my name is Clarence Olafir. Um, born and raised in Nigel, Alpha Park. Um, been loving my life all, for loving, my, I've lived, been loving here all my life. Um, married to Nicole Olafir, we just celebrated our 12th anniversary. Um, last week Sunday yes, yes, yes. so we just want to praise God we've got two beautiful boys together um, I've been in the logistic industry for quite some time over 10 years experience mm -hmm. um, also um, 
baptized um, my ninth year being clean and um, wow. sober um, yeah and I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the leadership at the RHM ministries um, so I can only thank God and this is who I am in a nutshell also the founder of the JMN movement um, which is the Jesus Magna foundation or movement or organization how others will call it um, so yeah God has been good man um, what an awesome topic that we will be sharing or what has been shared thus far so we keep we'll God all the glory yes. yeah so yeah we, I'm excited I'm excited for what God is about to do and like you were saying that um, in this month where men are coming out and really yes. understanding that they too have a purpose in life most definitely most definitely thank you Elder Clarence so um, the Jesus Magna movement we're definitely going to touch on it um, a little bit later for now um the the team of the month the team of the series let me say it's a series because remember it's an ongoing series that we're going right. to have is the possessed man we are touching on the possessed man now so looking at the past two episodes we had bishop or what you go on and when you watch those two series uh, two two episodes what is or what was your view mm. of the possessed man from your perspective Sure, it's, I think um, Bishop um, explained it um, so much in detail and obviously we all have our different views in terms of what a possessed yes. man is. Yes, yes. Um, so possessed man, if you look at um, uh, the definition or the meaning of possessed man, is it's being controlled by something. Yes. So it is someone that is um, out of his mind. Um, not knowing what he is doing mm. uh, even though he assumes or think he's doing the right, the right thing, thing yes. it might be it might look good to society might look good to him but he's still possessed in what he's doing yes because at the end of the day he might do or uh, do things that seems right to him but in other side he's hurting those so that is my view in terms of what a possessed man is sure. so the other clearance um You've just mentioned now in your introduction that you've been, um, you are a recovered drug addict. You've been, you've been, um, addic you, you, you were part of like an addiction, substance abuse was part of your life at some time in your life. What would you say from your personal perspective? What would you say led you to that position, to, to that position, to become a possessed man? Yeah, so, so, so yes. I have been addicted to substance abuse for 10 to 11 years and the substance that I used was ecstasy, um, it was um, cat and it was also crystal. Mm. Um, what led me to the, um, nobody wants to be led to be possessed. Most definitely. Um, nobody wants to be addicted when you start mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. um, we just did it out of curiosity for enjoyment, mm -hmm. experiment. And little did we know that um, for some of us experience it for our first time that we'll be addicted to such an extent that these things control you mm -hmm. that it leaves you leaving loved ones behind yes. and just wanting to have more of this so in my in my in, in my in my journey um, being possessed um, as a drug addict as society will call it is that I was controlled by the substance because mm -hmm. if I did not have this, you wouldn't have I, been. I wouldn't. I I would have gone out of my way, and I was the type of person that I would always um, want more money to ensure that I have this. Mm. And we become possessed in in in, in this manner that um, we hide it mm -hmm. in what we are doing. Oh yes. So it makes it as if it, everything is normal, everything is okay. But little did we know that this thing is it's controlling, controlling you. Yep. So substance is, uh, and, 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 and we, look, we need to understand that uh, substance abuse is called a mind-altering substance. Sure. So it controls the mind and yet so a possessed man or possessed person or the meaning of possessed is being controlled by something. Okay. Mind control. Mind controlling substance. Yeah. Yep. Wow. We always learn new things, eh? So it's a mind controlling substance. Mind controlling substance. It's, it's, it's actually, when I look at it, it's actually a better word to use instead of saying a drug, drug addict. addict, mind controlling substance, because it literally 
controls your your way of thinking right. it controls your way of doing, doing things, things and and therefore just like you mentioned you become possessed right and and sometimes you don't even know that you are in a state of being possessed yes. because there's something that's controlling you mm. so with that being said what would you say causes men in you know in general or maybe if you can take the example of the drug addiction what would you say causes men to become possessed Like I say, we, we, men or any person doesn't want to be possessed. Yes. Only when curiosity comes in and things that you like, where it becomes a burden. Mm. And this thing controls you that you have to maintain this type of it's not a lifestyle or maintain a certain pattern of how you operate in yes, your life. Yes, yes, yes. So my ultimate something is not limited to the alcohol it's not limited to gambling there's a whole lot, of, a things whole lot of things in the test yeah. to mind altering substance and if you look at the the, the 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 man that was possessing in mark chapter 5 we don't understand or we don't know the purpose of why he was possessed yes yes um but we do understand that it was normal mm -hmm. so any normal person we see that is possessed based on certain habits certain things that he acquainted himself with where he lost his mind and the mind altering substance and we need to understand that substance is a, a spirit called pharmakia. Mm -hmm. Pharmakia is a spirit that controls your mind, controls you or being you. And a man, for like you are saying the question based on how does a man become possessed, possessed? we don't want to become possessed. Yes. Is that mind altering, is mouth altering substance or a situation is yeah. is leading us to become uh, possessed. possessed. You know, I like the, it's like a, it's 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 actually a mind triggering thing now for me. I like the word that you are using. It's a mind. It's like a mind alteration, which means we do become possessed because with what the mind is fed with. Right. So whatever you feed your yes. mind with can control you. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting and I'm thinking, I'm having a triggering moment and I'm like, the mind, so, you know, usually the word of God says that we must have a mind of Christ. Yes. And when we have a mind of Christ, whatever, you know, some, when, whenever something that is how powerful the mind is, when you have a mind of Christ, should you be triggered with maybe the wrong thing? And you know that you have a mind of Christ. It will not automatically lead you, lead you to be right. in a state of being, you know, they have that alteration in thinking or doing things. Right. Because now you have a mind of Christ. Right. Mar, um, I like what you mentioned, man. It's a, it's a, it's a good word. I love that word. B because it, it adds up to the possessed man. You will not become possessed unless your mind has been altered. So... What I want to say, Elder Clarence, and what you just mentioned is, watch what you feed your mind. Sure, come on. Watch what you feed your mind. Right. Because your mind can be so powerful, and it can lead you to either good things or bad things. Absolutely. I always mention to people, you know, we can easily focus on the negative things. But I always, I always say to people, I always encourage people by saying, the negative will always be there. But focus on the positive, positive things. Right. Because what you feed your mind with, Come so right. shall it become. That's right. I, I really love that. It was really just a, a triggering moment to me now because I don't know <laughs> if you can I mean, add I, I mean, something to that. Paul says to us, then, we need to renew our minds daily. Daily. So why would he say renew, renew your minds daily? Because your mind is not renewed. Yes. You will be possessed by someone controlling you. And if you in Christ, we are, re we are renewed by the scripture, but what yes. scripture teaches us for the day. It also teaches us to repent daily. Yes. So in order for you not to be possessed, repent. So you need to don't be controlled by something By else. something that, that went wrong yesterday. Yesterday. Or something that could have captured your mind yesterday, which wasn't right. Right. Sure. Yeah, near here. <laughs> wow, the word of God. Yeah, the clearance, um, you know, our lifestyles sometimes become a problem. When did you realize that your lifestyle um, that you had previously as a possessed man, as a possessed man, is affecting your family and you need to change that? 
um, let me be frank and honest, I did never want to realize that. Mm -hmm. I never uh, thought I had a problem. Yes. Until my wife just saw within me that I am actually a problem, that I am actually possessed in what yes. I'm doing. Yeah. Because obviously um, being possessed, um, um, you being controlled, staying away from home for seven days, married, that's not right. Yes. I'm not out at work, mm -hmm. I'm gallivanting and um, seeking more um, of, of drugs. Mm -hmm. So automatically you are possessed. And I never thought that I was possessed in that manner. Mm -hmm. I always assumed that I can handle this thing. And when she reached out, um, then I realized, you know what, I actually do have a problem. Yes, yeah. But I can tell you now that I did never want to do drugs because I still enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I still had fun. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you are controlled in this manner that you think that you can still control. Yes. But little did you know that you were already out of who you are. And she reminded me that the person that I met before you becoming this possessed person, mm -hmm. she reminded me who I was. And, um, um, and then she introduced me to our now bishop and our late apostle Violet, where spiritual counseling took place. Mm -hmm. So I never wanted to leave. I never sure. thought that I was possessed. I never thought that I was mm -hmm. addicted because I was always said, go for counseling. Like, I don't have a problem. They can be a problem. And you know, unfortunately, this is what we see in society, mm -hmm. that many men, male, whatever, in, in any possessed thing that they are, they think that they control, they have. They are fine. They are fine situation. with this thing, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we control it. No, I, I don't have a problem because as long as I, I can look after, I have my family, I can do this. Um, because that's what happened in, in my beginning stages. God paid do what everything is necessary in the house, mm -hmm. buy groceries, but I always have my Look personal. after the family, yes. And we think that is okay, mm. but you are possessed in such a lot of ways. So sure. your question, um, I did not want help. You know, um, what I'm thinking now, Elder Clarence, is I spoke to someone the other day, um, also someone that was pos uh, that is currently um, into drugs, unfortunately, drug addict, and, and I spoke to this person and I asked, so, when 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 are you going to make a choice right because i believe this is me believing that um you know people who use this drug someone who's in is who's caught up in drugs um that they must make the decision to say that i need to come, come out and if you that person don't make the decision even if you take them to the rehabilitation centers or whatever the case may be they will go through the process, but then when they get back into society, revert back to their habits, unfortunately. Yeah. It's unfortunately the pattern that we've seen. Yeah. So I spoke to this person, and then this person said, you know what, I don't think me using drugs is a problem. Mm. So I, I love what you just mentioned, that because in your state that you are, you really don't realize that it is a, it is a problem. You Yes, you know that it is wrong. Yeah. You know that it is wrong, because that is one thing that we know. This thing that I'm doing is not right, but I don't see it as a problem. Mm. I don't see it as if I'm controlled. I by don't this see thing. yes. I don't see as if I'm controlled by this thing. Yeah. So with that being said, um, Elder Clarence, what motivation or what encouragement can you give to that person? This people who feel that they're not sure, they 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 feel that this is not a problem. What encouragement can you give them with regards to that? You. We, we, we always say that um, you have to make up your mind. Mm -hmm. You have to make up your mind what you want in life. And rightful, like you are saying, is that many people will go to rehabilitation centers, mm -hmm. come back, it's like because you told you to go. Yes, yeah. But what we need to do, we need to outline what the difference is. Yes, and I yes. think Bishop uh, Otto mentioned it last week, we need to tell the man that you are good, you are excellent. Mm -hmm. And these are the type of talks that men don't have. Yes. Me growing up, um, the only son, um, the last born. I grew up in a family where the love was there. Yes. But I always, I always used to isolate myself. Mm. I would go and sit in the room and eat. I would go and sit and go and play music, games and everything in the room. I was never associated. Mm -hmm. So already I was in isolation. Mm -hmm. Already it was like I was to possess me. Oh. I was at the grave, but I was in my room. Oh, yes. Not speaking to anyone. So Go. whose voices am I listening to? Sure. Growing up in Nigel, I did not have family this side. Mm -hmm. So the only family that I had was my friends. Yes. So either my big friend, my big brother, or my little brother. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, 
my big brothers or my brothers led me astray exactly. because I assumed this was right. Mm-hmm. So I would then say to those who are still trapped and stuck in addiction is that you need to realize where you were 10 years ago mm-hmm. or even two years ago and see where you are, and now. See where you are now. And you will realize that, you know what, I actually am addicted. How many, how many bags did I use? How many amounts of money did I use? Mm. Back two mm. years mm. and where I am now. Mm-hmm. Did I lose a job? Did I, um, um, all those type of questions you start asking yourself, then you will realize, you know what, I am actually the problem. But if you or the individual doesn't ask that person, mm. there's no way we, we can assist the person. Yes. Because I always say this, we can send you to the best rehab. Mm-hmm. We can send you where it is a million rand a month, whatever. That person won't come right if, if his mind make a decision. is not mm. made up. No, most definitely. So, yeah. Sure. I love, I, 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 I love that because, you know, sometimes we tend to think that, it, that, that there's just certain ways that you need to do things. But yet, there is a process. And and if we don't, if we don't, if you don't sit and do and analyze, where like you just mentioned now, we are the clearance. You sit and you analyze where was I two years ago, and where am I now? You know, sometimes even besides looking at the person who's maybe uh, um, been caught up in drugs, you look at a normal. Say for instance, I want to make an example, a business person. Yeah. Two years ago, you just started your business yeah. off. You were very um, 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 passionate about what you are doing. You, uh, you know, finances started coming in. You did what you were supposed to do for your family. <coughs> you're still doing that. But now you are doing more of the things that you're not supposed Most to do. do yeah. Because now I'm getting more money. Mm. But I'm doing more of the wrong things. Sure. And yet I'm still looking after my family. Right. I'm still making sure that everything is done what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. But yet there's other bad habits that you still encounter, that you still get. And, and, and it becomes a problem. Yeah that mind altering situation right. the mind altering situation that we bring so after you had an encounter with jesus um elder clarence the word of god in mark 5 verse 19 speaks about the possessed man um who was now healed right you wanted to go with jesus but jesus said no you must go back and you must go tell the people what is it that i've done for you mm. now when i look at you it's like the perfect example the perfect example of what the word of God speaks about here in Mark 5 verse 19. You were in a possessed state. You came to Christ. Christ healed you. And now you are saying, I'm standing up. And I am now that man who was healed. The chains are broken. Because the chains are broken, I can now go out and I can speak to another possessed man and say, this is where I come from. This is what God has done for me. You can also be in this position so what i want from what i need from for you uh, from you elder clarence can you tell us about the journey of healing how did you how did you encounter that process because remember we don't get healed immediately yeah. after god comes and he, he, he cast out the demons from the man healing took place yeah. spiritually right. but still you have to go into a community and yeah. face the community how was that process for you? How did you find that process? Sure, it was very hard and difficult. Um, I was sharing uh, with someone earlier, and I said that um, I used to stand at the at the community wall, and people would come and come and share the word of God. Yes. But I would chase them away. Yeah. Because we are doing our thing and we don't want them to hear mm-hmm. to, we don't want to hear what they are saying yes and when i decided to make right um obviously that was through the counseling sessions and, yes, yes. and things like that and the counseling session was over two years and i didn't complete mm-hmm. going by the amex center going to see pastor violet um, so all these things um was a journey of a battle, a wrestle, yes. mm-hmm. because what I want to do, I find myself not doing. Not doing, yes. Because my 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 sessions were Tuesdays and Thursdays, but to find myself it was nine o'clock, but half past eight on my way to the Elmick Center for sessions, someone pops up and they have my favorite drink, they have a bag full of mm. of, of of drugs. So the enemy knows it's a wrestle between. You 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 get what I'm saying. So, 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 my journey when I started off in Rivers of Hope, um, I always, when I went home on a Sunday, I would 
quickly get undressed because now I'm driving past the community wall mm -hmm. and I'm dressing as if I wasn't in church. Mm -hmm. But later the Holy Spirit of God told me, you know what? This in all this, this is yeah, mm -hmm. you now have to go out and show people that you're now serving the Lord. Yes. And my first encounter with God was not when I got baptized, mm -hmm. when I started to um, engage in the things of God. Mm -hmm. My first encounter when I when I relapsed my first time. When I relapsed my first time, I, I remember it was on a Sunday. Um, I was taken to the cells because I had a fight with my wife. And the policeman put me in a woman's cell mm. on a Sunday evening. And I remember I had a slip on shoe. And for the mere fact, and I still had drugs in my in my shoe because we're not allowed to have laces in, mm. in, in the cells. So Automatically, a man must go into a man's cell. Yes. But on this specific day, they decided to put me in a woman's cell. Mm. And as I was in a woman's cell, I realized that this is not right. Mm. And he said, they said, you know what, just go in here. Mm. And little did I know, the fi five o'clock or half past four in the morning, I had to now be transferred because they were now um, uh, uh, knocking off. Yeah. But little did I know that they were, they all, oh, they, they didn't know, but I was protected in such mm. a way that. When I got over to the next cell, I just saw blood all over the cell. Sure. The people were fighting. They were fighting, and the one guy from Alra Park mentioned, said, you were lucky you weren't here, because sure. you two could have get hurt. Then I realized how God protected me while I was still in my toxicated so, environment. Yes, yeah. Remember, I already got baptized, already got saved, yes. but God protected me. Yeah. I only realized, and I, and I realized that this was an encounter that I had to now rely that God was for me. Mm. But you know, going on, it wasn't enough. I still get vented. Still get vented. I came to my senses, started serving again. In December again, I relapsed again, or was it November period of the festive season? Mm -hmm. And we all know the saving eye. It is only for period, it's only for time that, yeah, you, yeah. that you, you are actually taking a break. Mm. But the specific encounter was that we went to the merchant's house, we drove my father's bucky, and we went to the specific merchant. The pet, the, the, the car, the bucky was half a tank. We went there, he didn't want to give us drugs because I wanted to see how the camera of my son. We got out and I saw on WhatsApp, on Facebook, I can't remember specific one, WhatsApp. And I went online and I saw my wife is online. And immediately when I went online, I saw a post of violence online. Immediately I went off. Because it's almost like a conviction. Yeah, yeah. My friend came out. He says, "Okay, that um, the merchant doesn't want to give us. We have to go and fetch the box and the cable, mm -hmm. so that we can make a package for the camera yes. that needs to be now the exchange, uh, sold exchange." Yeah. Yeah. We reverse back in, in in the specific street, and immediately as I want to turn again, the car switches off. We don't know what's the problem. Yeah. We kick start. Doesn't want to start. My friend gets someone to tow us to the house. Everything is fine. We take the box now with the camera, we go to the merchant now. We have the thing that he requested. Yeah, he, requested he comes, he box. says, you know what? I'm not gonna give it unto you. You're gonna go and get another buyer and then you can come and buy. We say, okay, but just give us something. And obviously in the, my mind, now I had encounter with God, I know the word. Mm. I can see the signs that God yeah. doesn't want me to carry on with this thing. Yeah. And here's the, here's, here's the beauty, we went home, and I, we just had a, like a line each. We slept and I spoke to my friend. Now we encouraging each other in being high, intoxicated with the word. So mm. now I'm saved. Remember I got baptized. Mm. This was in December. And I'm telling you, you know what? New Year's Eve service is coming. We need to go to church. The following day, we woke up. We went to the car. Immediately the car started. Sure. Half a thing, there was nothing wrong with the car. I told my friend, you know what? Now I'm going home. Because I still lived at a, in, in our own place, me and my wife. Mm -hmm. and in the actual fact, she moved away from the house. Mm -hmm. I lived on my own. My mother still stayed in town. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go stay by them. Mm -hmm. That encounter made me realize that God sure. was speaking. God was blocking every time I wanted to go and get a mm -hmm. fix. Every time. So, had I not been baptized, had I not known the word, had I not experienced, had I not had a taste of what God can do. Sure. That was my encounter. And up until that day, New Year's Eve. It was my deliverance service. So I'm telling God, I want help. I want help. New Year's Eve service comes. And 
I remember the elder was preaching and he says, this is a deliverance service. Mm -hmm. And he comes and says, for all those who are addicted to certain things, whether it is women come forward, whether it is alcohol come forward. And I'm standing there, I'm, 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 I don't want to say drugs. Mm -hmm. But the word of God says you need to confess. Yes. So he says, is there someone else? And the Holy Spirit urges me to go forward. Mm -hmm. As I'm going forward, he mentioned everybody one side because he's grouping them. Cigarettes one side, alcohol the side, gambling sure. one side. And he says, what is your issue? And I had to say over the mic what it is. But at first says, drugs. Mm -hmm. Drugs. Mm -hmm. Softly. But God says in his word, you have to confess, confess your, your sins. sins. Yeah. So immediately when I said drugs, mm. immediately deliverance took place. Sure. And ever since then, Never no, back no, 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 no thirst for, mm. for mm. drugs, no hunger for drugs. And that was my, out, that was my encounter that I had with God. Sure. That was my encounter. That divine encounters, a divine, it's like a supernatural, supernatural, sure. supernatural, uh, uh, um, like you said, deliverance session that need to need to happen specifically for you. Yeah. Um, the reason why I asked that question, um, Elder Clarence, is, you know, some people don't understand that it is always a process. Yeah. It is never something that just <coughs> happens to you and you get over whatever it is, and then you become, then you are, you know, put in line and in in on par with everything yeah. that you need to do. Why I'm also asking that question is because society sometimes expects us to be perfect from the words that go. Mm. And there is no such thing. Sometimes we need to give one another the benefit of the doubt. Right. And know that when God said he is doing a new thing in your life, it is not up to me to decide when the new thing is going to happen in your life. Oh, no. It is not up to anyone to decide how God is going to do that yeah. new thing in your life. How long, yeah. And how long is he going to take to do, to do that new thing in your life? The encouragement that I'm getting out of that one, um, Elder Clarence, is that, especially for men, you know, men are sometimes so hard on themselves. Yeah. And they don't get to realize who God has called them to be. They don't get to realize the power that God has instilled within them. Sure. They take themselves for granted in so many ways. Because I always say, I would like to believe that, you know, if I had to be a man and I had to tap into the Holy Spirit and I can, you know, because when you tap into the Holy Spirit, you see things in a different way. Yeah. It is not information that it gives you. It is a revelation. Sure, and because the fact of the fact that it is now revelation, you get to do things on a different level. Mm. You get to do things on a different mm. level. So what I want to say to, especially our men out there, our fathers, our brothers, don't be too hard on yourself. Right. But what you need to do is step out. Mm. And like you've mentioned, you have to step out of your state in order for you to receive yeah. deliverance. Right. You have to make yourself available to do the things of what God has required of you. Right. You mentioned that God, in your state that you were, God made sure that he covers you. Mm. He made sure that he covers you because... I am of the belief, and I and, and this is one belief that no one will ever take away from me. Because I am a child of God, because I am a born-again Christian, washed by the blood of the Lamb, whiter than snow, right. the anointing of God, wherever I go, He will protect me. He will make sure that He will, that this is my child. Sure. And because He is my child, I must protect this person. Sure. Sure. Because look at what you just mentioned now. He protected you. A divine appointment you went to the cells mm. you were not placed in a cell where a fort is broke, broken loose yeah. you were placed on your own yeah. you know sometimes we will think sometimes men think why am I not involved sometimes God don't want you to be involved because he knows what is about to happen mm. and because you are a child of God he does not involve you or you don't get involved because God knows the end right. already, so he's already protecting me. Mm. It's such an encouragement for me, and I hope and I know and I trust that God will open the eyes of our understanding so that we may be enlightened. Come on. So that we may be, may, may be enlightened, so that we may know mm. what, God, what is it that God is doing in our lives. 
what God is it what is it that God is doing in your life mm. daddy what God is doing in your life my brother sure. God has done a new thing in your life elder clearance and now you are able to stand and to say I can testify this is what God has done for me yeah I went, you know, to one of the funeral services of the girls who passed on. The one pastor said, I am not standing here to tell you what this girl has, been, has done. I am showing you. This mm -hmm. is what is, she's done. Sure. I walked next to this girl and I saw this is the work of God that she has done. Sure. Which means we must, we must, uh, 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 what's it? Who can I say? We must keep that, you know, we must take photos, must, we must capture yeah, the moments. The moments. We must capture the moments of <coughs> where we were yeah. and where God has taken, where right. God has, has brought us from. Right. Because that is our testimony. And I thank God for the testimony, um, Elder Clarence, because with that being said, after you got saved, after God delivered you, you did not just sit still and decide, okay, the other thing for me saved. And I'm fine now, and I have my wife, and I have my children, and it's very care. And Bob's your uncle, everything is good. Yeah. Then God comes with a other sense of humor, and I love the way God works because He's He does things so in such a unique way. I work in on Saliva and and for skilling a manner in different times. Right. God says now to you, Elder Clarence, I've done for you what I was supposed to do. Now I am giving you the authority. Mm. Here on this earth to do my work according to my plan and my purpose that I have for you. Sure. Then comes Jesus Matna. Yeah. Now I always say, you know, I was I always say, you know what, I remember how Jesus Matna in Sparkle started off. Right. Sure. Um and not many people know that. Yeah. Know this. Um it wasn't the wrestle. It was such a good thing the way it happened because I can always remember how Bishop really pushed us. Yeah. And how he said to us, you know, if you come back this week in Bible school yeah. and he said it and say Bishop Nia, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. go back, go sit and pray and ask God oh, yeah. what is it that he wants you to do. Right. You must know it I do modern right? Okay. No, as you must know, Elder Clarence. Now, at that time, it was Brother Clarence and Sister Amy. Yeah. Now you need to do this. Jesus, Martha, God gave you a vision. A vision which is unique to you. Mm. It is your Baba, what you have to right. Can you tell us more about that vision? Sure. Um, sure, yeah, you, 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 you're right in saying that, um, it, this was birth while we were still in Bible studies. Yes. Um, sure, <laughs> God is faithful. So, 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 Clarence loved the name Na, he, he used yes. the word Na a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, and 2018, <clears throat> um, in actual fact, when I got saved, I always, I, I was always someone that, that, that loved, um, um, uh, clothing, label type of clothing. Mm -hmm. And it was always attractive in a way what a person wears, whether yes. it's Nike or Costi, whatever mm. it is. So I always had a dream of, or rather a vision, whereby I always wanted to have, in actual fact, there was a season where the retail stores, uh, Mr. Price had these t-shirts, come let's go and have a six pack, let's go and drink beer, let's go and have fun. Yes, yes. So in that season, um, God showed me then, go and make t-shirts. Go to your friends and let that be the message for them if they don't want to come to church. Mm -hmm. Because you're always inviting to church but they didn't want to come. Yes, yeah. So something that is fashionable, mm -hmm. something that is attractive, mm -hmm. let Jeremiah 29 stand out and yes. you go and just sit with them. Mm -hmm. But let that message preach, preach to, them. to them. Yes. So 2018, I was asked to share the youth evening. And I didn't know what to share. Mm -hmm. And I asked God, how do I share with the youth? And that time the youth liked or loves rhymes. Uh, anything that rhymes is something catchy to the yeah, frame. Yeah. So I looked at the before picture of myself and I looked at the a, a current picture. Yeah. So I looked at when I was intoxicated with substances. Mm -hmm. And God says drugs, mark clar, and this is how we spell the full name, clar. Yeah. K L double A R. A -R. Mm. A comma Mar. M A so very clar and Mar mm. is a rhyme. 
mark Jesus mark no. now mm. so that is how this was birth 2018 so 2018 started posting on facebook you know yeah. hashtag yeah. captions and people were encouraging you need to start making t-shirts started to design a, a, a cross and starting to make mm. the, the drugs matla it is a down yes, drugs matla was my basically my testimony my situation where yes. drugs destroyed my life yes. drugs destroyed um so many things within mm -hmm. me because i wanted to achieve so many things in in, in life yes I wanted to conquer so much but because of the drug situation being possessed with drugs yeah. it allowed me not to achieve my goals in life and here coming to god now I understand that God took a naked now yeah. and started making the t-shirts and, and here's the thing Elder Amy that um, in the beginning stages uh, sta stages when, when we started off or rather when I started off with a t-shirt and thing like that people would come to me and Facebook me and message me and like mm. how do you use the word now with Jesus with Jesus mm. who is holy yeah and here you come in as a as, as, as fairly new in church and yes. you think you are doing mm. the right thing and I almost aborted this baby mm -hmm. and I was telling the ladies at the safe house I said head I aborted this baby I don't think the safe haven wouldn't operate it we wouldn't have go out yes, from yeah. community to community and mm -hmm. meet different people had this been aborted mm -hmm. but I thank God for spiritual parents that spoke life into oh, my yes, situation yes, yes. because you see you need the guidance of people that walk this journey way before you people with experience, people with stature. And this is where Bishop laid out for me. It's a fine and and, and, and like you are saying, people will always speak whether you are doing the right thing or, or doing the, the, wrong, the, mm -hmm. the wrong thing. So he sat down with me and the birth of, of, of the JMN movement, um, we, 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 I remember in COVID season, um, we started off where um, we call it like a set up and share. Mm -hmm. So why people were still in the houses, church wasn't operating yes, as much. Yeah. We then set up sound outside our yards and just, you know, just declaring the, the word of yeah, God. Mm. So this is how we started inviting few guys from Reha Park. And now we have the branch in Reha Park. Um, and this is how we birthed out of mm. the JMN. So uh, like I said, it wasn't easy. Um, and I still don't think it's easy because I let, let, let me share it on this platform. So one one year coming back from church on a sun on the, on the, on the New Year's Eve service, somebody waits at the house. New Year's Eve, opens up sure. the gate, the door, the gate, the, the street is dark, and he comes to me and says, "Brother Clarence, uh, can we speak?" And he's someone that we have been ministering together, and he comes to me and he actually confesses that there is a merchant that wants to take me out of the game. Sure. And I haven't shared this much with people, but he wants to take me out of the game based on drugs, matla, Jesus, matla. Yes, yeah. And this person confesses saying that um, the people are no longer buying like they used to buy. Yes. So here's the thing, I did never go out and, and tell people, people not, go not to go. It was mm. basically just my life story. Mm -hmm. that drugs destroyed me mm -hmm. and then Jesus saved me. Mm -hmm. So when he came in and confessed this thing, it made me realize, hey, this thing I need to leave. But then again, the Holy Spirit did not want to leave. Yes. Two years, or last year, also again, we also approached where someone came in our midst and had a gun and also wanted to, sure. to, to, to shoot me. And these are things that we don't speak. And these are the trials and tribulations, understanding that if you look at in, in, in the book of Exodus, where Pharaoh wanted to kill mm -hmm. um, the boys and Moses yes. had to escape, the mother escaped. We see the same scenario with, with, with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, had the mother supported these children, we wouldn't have they seen the Moses been, yes. delivering the Egyptians, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Israelites the out Israelites, of Egypt. Yes, yeah. We wouldn't have seen Jesus, the Messiah, coming to mm -hmm. come and save us. Had these things been aborted. Yes. So I had I aborted this baby, baby. See, we're only now going to in our fifth year. And like I said, in my beginning stages, I did not know because I'm still immature, I'm yes. still a baby mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. But obviously I have to now understand where this is going. And if you can ask me now, Elder Amy, do you think we, uh, we would be having a safe house uh, for ladies, reaching out to those? No, I did not. Because I can tell you, when I got saved, I did not want to go and minister. Because yes. the person that I was, I was an introvert person that could not speak in, crowd, uh, in front of in crowd. crowd. I was a shy mm -hmm. person. So why would God now use somebody that was shy to come and speak? 
and we see the life of Moses where Moses was a stutterer mm -hmm. but it was a stutterer that spoke to the the, the Israelites to, Israel, yes. to be released out of mm -hmm. Egypt so God will use anybody how he wants who he wants how he will mm -hmm. and, and, and I can just thank God for for us reaching out in the way that we are reaching mm -hmm. out and one of the things is, is that we want to make it fashionable so people can see that that the word na is for everyone oh, yes. and the word na we need to understand that um, it is a slang word for people who understand God Jesus didn't come for 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 the sick he came he didn't come for the healed he came for the sick mm -hmm. he didn't come for the righteous he came for the unrighteous oh, yes. so when we reaching out with the word now we are not speaking to those who are mature in Christ mm -hmm. we are speaking to those who understand the language what is now Most definitely. so that is how this whole thing birthed out thank you elder Clarence with that being said elder Clarence um what advice I know what what advice or oh, I don't like the word advice um, what encouragement um, can you give to someone that is currently trapped in a possessed life in a possessed spirit does not necessarily have to be drugs can be anything what encouragement can you give to them to get out of that state um, like I've mentioned earlier um, you need to realize where you were two years ago, even three days ago. Mm -hmm. See where your life is and see the goals that you are setting out for yourself. Yeah. If you are married, you have goals for your children and your wife. If you in business, you have goals for the long term. How many people you want to employ, how many branches you want to establish and all those things. So I want to say that even if you are possessed and feeling like giving up, you need to start speaking to speaking out speak to men that has walked this journey mm -hmm. that has walked this course um there's a saying that and and, and, and people always say it's only a drug addict that can save a drug addict mm -hmm. and i don't i i i i i i can't agree on that statement yes mm -hmm. because the people that assisted me my bishop and apostle were never on drugs mm -hmm. so what i'm really saying is that even if you have a drug problem Go and speak to a pastor. Mm. Jesus was not blind to heal the blind. Oh, yes. Jesus was not deaf to heal, to heal the deaf. So I want to say this. Get connected to a, a pastor. A pastor that you trust. Um, even if you don't trust, even if it's outside your community. Go and speak to them. And they too will get the revelation of, from God. And they will be uh, able to assist you. Mm. And you will then now, through those process of the counseling sessions, you will then now see that you will be delivered and healed from you being possessed. And many times we think that we make the assumption that we are possessed in such a big way. Just to come find when you start speaking, you will find it, but it's not such a big deal. Yes, but we make it because we don't want to speak because of pride. Man has too much pride, the other mm -hmm. enemy. Sure. And once men can start speaking out to, to men, they have conferences, like Bishop Oro mentioned, if we can start engaging with men, telling men that you are excellent in what you are doing, you are perfect in what you are doing, and then we will see uh, a, a man coming back to the house of God, men taking their rightful places and in homes society. and in society, mm -hmm. and men will be proper role models for those who need to be uh, modeled out. Sure. It's a mind-altering situation, the other clearance. So, that one, that mind word, mind. that word. Like it's a, you know, for the like you said, the, for the drug addiction, you call it mild, the mind-altering substance. So I want to use that the word situation mm. in substance because we're not only um, speaking about the drug specifically. Right. The mind-altering situation that captured my mind today. Um, I want to thank you for that word. Um, it is really um, a trigger, it was a trigger for me as well. Um, and I believe that God will work in the minds of our men. I, I trust and I know that God will do a new thing um, for our men. I'm, I want to ask you, Elder Clarence, that you know, after today, go out, pray for our men, pray for our fathers, pray for our brothers, pray, you know, randomly. Let us continue to pray for men. There's a big need for that in our communities. Absolutely. There's a big need for that in our churches, in our homes. Um, we need to continue to pray for our, our, our men um, in order for us to see the change that we want to see. 
I always say that I need to be the change that I want to see. see absolutely. So it starts with, with me, me by bringing the change. All right. And I want to thank you for being the change, um, Elder Clarence. You know, we've been friends for years. Yeah. I always okay. say to people, if there's one person who knows my story with Mondain, it's <laughs> Elder Clarence. Um, I'm a mensa quite, but unfortunately that is the truth because that is what we know. Yeah. Um, and and I can literally sit and testify, even you know, not testify and say where Clarence has been and where he is currently right now. You know, we can just thank God. It is only through the work of God. He, God used vessels like you mentioned, Bishop, Apostle. Yes. Um, Pastor Crystal, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Orieta every now and then, yeah. you know, he, he used the church to to to, to show you mm -hmm. as a person that this is your current state and we as a church can help you out of the state right. that you are in. Why I'm saying that is there's men out there who does not want to go through that process, who feels that I can get myself out of the situation Shopping. and yet there is people who can help. Yet there is the church who can stand in the gap for you. Men, let us go out there and seek for help. Help is available. Um, and trust me, God will definitely work for you. I want to thank you yet again, um, yeah, the clearance for your presence in the Pink Lounge. I know, I know transformation of lives will take place. I know, you know, Jesus Magna is such a blessing in all the communities you know, close, near and far. And I know we see the difference that you are making. We, 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 we speak about what you do. I specifically love what it is that you are doing because it's just amazing. God trusts you with that process. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you will question yourself, but you will find your answers in God because he has called you to do what you are doing, the way you are doing it. And may you continue to be a blessing for others. Continue to be that model a boy wants to see. Um, because not only Casiano is, lo is looking up to you, not only Kion, but there's other boys that's around you that's also watching you. Some may not, especially the younger boys, they won't come and say, yeah. I see, I love, I like. They don't, but they see, we see what is it that is being done sometimes we don't mention it we don't say it but i know like i've mentioned it earlier that god has called you for a specific reason and i thank god that he's using you in multiple ways as well and i know that you know what we will see tremendous things happening through um your through, through jesus Magna. and allow god to use you in, in other ways as well. Because sometimes we think that, you know what, as the diva that would do, sometimes God will show you something else that you need to do. And I'm standing in a fright, go out and do what you have to do. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and continually um, show you and pave the way for you. Amen. Because God is, the here is the, 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 how can I say, he's the one that's placed you in that position so thank you for joining us in the pink lounge um and thank you for tuning in in the pink lounge this afternoon um check us out on our facebook page on instagram on tiktok on youtube and what i would also require uh, what i would want to request from our viewers is um should you need to ask a question or you are interested in what it is that we are talking about feel free you can either inbox us you don't have to you don't have to write your question on um, our comments box you can inbox us we will gladly answer we can refer you to our bishop to our apostle right. to uh, the counselor the the the, uh, 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 the leadership of our churches yes. as well um help is available yeah. it is not um limited to our church it is for the community it is for our surrounding areas um we will gladly, we will be able to reach out to anyone and everyone who would like assistance from either Elder Clarence, Elder Nicole, the Jesus Magna movement, also Rivers of Hope Ministries, yes. um, Sparkle as well. 
and yes we will be to you all we will be available anytime 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 during the day <laughs> at night when you feel you want to send a message 12 o'clock at night do that we are available thank you very much enjoy the rest of your day